All right. Well, here is a person who is rather critical of me and uh, a little bit on the mocking side. He says, I see you're still banging on about blood glucose levels. That's like focusing on the fever when bacterial infection is eating your flesh. It's hyperinsulinemia and insulin resistance you need to fix. But you are the world's leading expert, right? <laughs> well, my first word to this individual is, uh, you know, it. you'll go farther in life if you'll be a little polite. Your mocking tone is not going to get you very far. I mean, it got you for me to make this comment, but you won't go too far with that kind of a tone. Um, again, this kind of person would almost never say that to my face, but it's so easy to type that as a comment. So it, it pays to be polite. If you have a disagreement with me, that's fine. I, I get that. I don't always agree with myself. <laughs> but uh, when I look back to some of the things I've wrote, written or, or said years ago, but you can at least be polite. And uh, I could almost guarantee what kind of an individual this is. Number one, he's male because men tend to be more mockers than women. And number two, he's probably young. And uh, the one thing I will credit him with is because he is young, there's, a, there's hope for him. Uh, the, movie, uh, the movie was made back in the 50s called Shane. I, I saw the movie, but I liked the book better. And in the book, there was a quote where Shane was talking about a young, tough guy who wasn't behaving himself very well. And he made a statement that I've never forgotten. He said, his only problem is he's young. And that's something time will always cure. So hopefully time will cure this man's impoliteness. Although I kind of disagree with that statement. Uh, I would say when you're young and uh, you know, you're a punk or you're uh, impolite or whatever, uh, time will often cure that. Not always. Some people, when they're 70, they're still impolite and they're still rude and brash and not very nice. But anyway, getting off the point. So anyway, the man's criticism of me is this, Dennis, you big dummy, all you talk about is glucose levels. Number one, that's not true. I do talk about insulin. And if you if you don't see that, you haven't watched very many of my videos. But number two, glucose levels are a tremendous marker to watch. I'll stand by glucose markers because if you can bring your glucose down by diet, you will bring your insulin down as well. You don't have to worry and say, well, what can I do for my insulin? Here's the answer. What you can do for your insulin, bring your glucose down by diet. Now, the one problem is if you try to bring your glucose down by pills, then you're not solving your insulin issues. If you try to bring your glucose down by injecting insulin, then you're not solving anything and you're causing more trouble. But if you bring your glucose levels down by diet, guess what? Your insulin will follow right behind. What's the little uh, rhyme? Mary had a little lamb. His uh, fleece was white as snow and everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. Insulin is the little lamb. It's going to follow glucose when you beat it by diet. But only if you beat it by diet. If you Again, if you beat it by insulin, more insulin, baby, more insulin, baby, then yeah, your insulin is going to, not going to go down. You're going to increase your total insulin and you'll do yourself all kinds of problems and miseries. But if you beat it by diet, insulin comes down. That's why you don't need to constantly talk about insulin. And I do talk about it some for sure, lots of times. But yeah, I, I focus more on glucose because there's no Gary the meter to measure glucose or measure insulin. Uh, there's no Mike the meter that will measure insulin. Yeah, you can get fancy tests done that can measure your fast, fasting insulin, but there is no home meter. But there is a meter that can measure your glucose. And if you can bring that glucose down, guarantee that little lamb of your insulin levels is sure to follow as long as you're doing it by diet and exercise and not by taking more and more meds. So you focus on that. When I was a boy... We read a story. It's amazing the things that I remember. There are a lot I don't remember about my childhood, about my youth, about yesterday, but some things I'll never forget. But I, we read a story in school. It's about a boy that was kind of on the skinny side and he wanted muscles. So he went to a man 
And somehow this man was supposed to be very wise. He said, what can I do to get muscles? The man said, hmm, well, I'm not sure about that, but I'll tell you what, if you, I've got some wood in the backyard and if you will cut some of my wood for me so I can use it for firewood, and uh, he had, uh, in those days, a saw. I don't think they had chainsaws. But anyway, cut some of my wood for me. I'll think about what you can do uh, to get those muscles. So the guy's cutting wood like crazy, sawing the wood into pieces. Comes back the next day, he says, well, I don't seem to have many muscles yet. You know, I, I, did you come up with an idea for me how to get muscles? He said, no, but if you will go cut some more of my wood, I'll give it some consideration. And uh, so the guy goes, oh, no, not another day of wood cutting. But he goes and he saws the wood and cuts the wood all day long. Well, this happens day after day for like a couple of weeks. And finally, the, 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 the young guy is getting frustrated. He's, he goes up to the man and says, I've been cutting your wood for the last couple of weeks. And you still haven't given me one single idea about how to get muscles. And the man says, what? Don't you have them yet? And he kind of flexed his arm and there was a muscle. And flexed the other arm, there was a muscle. Well, the point is, while he was sawing that wood, he was giving himself muscles. When you're bringing your glucose down, my friend, when you're using your glucose meter and you're eliminating foods and you're leaning toward the low-carb foods that don't raise glucose, when you're doing that, you are dealing with your insulin problems. Yeah, insulin is a big deal. Yeah, insulin, hyperinsulinemia is a big deal. Insulin resistance is a big deal. Yes, 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 I believe it. But you don't have to just constantly focus on insulin. Focus on lifestyle, focus on diet, focus on keeping your spikes low. And insulin will meekly follow behind. And lo and behold, you will discover that not only has your glucose come down, but your insulin levels are incredibly better than they were. So number one, fella, don't be so impolite. Number two, you don't have to mention the word insulin every time you talk about beating diabetes. Benedict and I would like to invite you to study the Bible with us through our podcast. Join us in our home as we do our morning Bible studies. With a podcast, there's nothing to see. You just listen. And that means you can enjoy our Bible study while you drive in your car, go for a walk, or work out at the gym. Our podcast is called Discover the Word with Den and Ben, and you can find it in most platforms where you get your podcasts. And if you know nothing at all about podcasts and how they work, there's a link in the description that will help get you started.